What is up people, it is me Monster58 and welcome back to another video review. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Transformers Legacy United Deluxe Class Cybertron Universe Hotshot. A very big fan favorite character from the Transformers Cybertron series and in addition to that one of my personal favorite characters as a kid especially because I had the toy for such a long time and you'll actually get to see that in today's video but regardless this is another entry into the Cybertron Universe another entry into the Unicron Trilogy toys and I'm really really happy that we actually got Hotshot and a very faithful recreation of Hotshot. So, taking a look at the box here, you can obviously see Hotshot very nicely in his vehicle mode here, in his car mode, with the gun and the wings as well. The Legacy United stuff, you can see the Transformers uh, Cybertron Universe Hotshot right there, the Transformers logo, Generations, Takara Tomy, more nice artwork here of Hotshot on the side, more nice artwork here of the 40 Years of Transformers artwork for Legacy United, and finally, our obligatory product shots, Transforms in 17 steps. And so, yeah, I think really that's it for the box, as usual. Hasbro always kills it. And so, alrighty, folks, here we have the Transformers Cybertron Universe Deluxe Class Hotshot in his vehicle mode. I gotta say, this is pretty solid. It's not 100% accurate. There's issues I do have with it, but regardless, it is ex an extremely faithful recreation. And it's pretty much, I'd say, like... 90 to 95 percent accurate and you know you could argue that but overall really really solid so you do have a very nice blue you do have the nice silver paint here coming across the side got some nice molded in details the one a couple issues i have number one here um i really wish that the rims were painted silver and the tires uh stayed black that's one issue i do have i wish that was um i wish it was a thing coming here to the Front, you can see very, very nice, more silver paint, very nice paint for the headlights as well. Um, you do have the transparent windshield, but what are you going to do about that? I mean, I it was very accurate, and I think it looks good into the transparent. Just obviously be wary of how this lasts over time. You can obviously see, though, another issue I have is this part right here. Now, this is for the uh, joints in robot mode, uh, this blue discoloration here. I still don't get why they couldn't have painted it close to the same color, but regardless, it does put a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth. It, it's, it just kind of breaks it up in a not a good looking way, in my opinion, but it's whatever. More nice detail here on the front. I'm here to the side again. Um, you can see the very nice yellow striping. This is very accurate. Now, the other issue I personally have is this. Now, this in the show is supposed to be painted the blue color. And in addition to that, it's also supposed to be these. You see those little indents right there, like right here? All these indents are also supposed to be painted yellow. And that's a little bit of a shame. And these obviously, these red uh, screws here should not be exposed. Um, the other thing, too, is coming here to the back, it just looks like kind of like a shamble. Um, what I'll say is that it's not accurate, uh, but it is, it's not bad. It's not awful, awful looking, but I don't know. I'm not a fan of how it personally looks. I still think that this is, I'll say this, this is a great figure, but at the same time, this stuff still bothers me. And so that does take points off for me. But overall, for a faithful recreation of Hotshot, this is fantastic. So we're going to take a look at the accessories now because they make sense here in robot and in, in, sorry in robot in vehicle mode taking a look this is a very accurate gun to how it was in the show so very very nice you have the nice gunmetal gray it is transparent plastic we do have some nice molded detail here you got the uh gunmetal gray again for the uh, for the trigger essentially um or sorry well you know what would have been the trigger for the actual original toy i mean you do have five millimeter there five millimeter there there and then on, obviously on the other side as well so very very nice and obviously like five millimeter you can just plug it in because you got that peg there and then you do have the cyber planet key the velocitron uh Cyber key, which is really, really nice. It is, again, these are much smaller than the originals were, but you do have the nice Velocitron logo. It is in red, which is very accurate to the actual color. The only other issue is that, well, it should be painted silver on the edges, but what are you going to do? It's it, The fact that they added this at all is really, really cool. And then you do have just that little slit right there and then you just put the end of the key right into there and it fits perfectly fine and i usually just leave it there now the last feature to show on this vehicle mode is going to be the wings so you do have these little wing bits here that fold out now this was his cyber planet key power in the show speaking of which i will leave a link in the description so you guys can take a look at i found this youtube channel that had some really high resolution like uh, videos of a lot of the Transformer Cybertron characters, their transformations, and their cyber keys. So I'll leave the video of Hotshot that I saw in the description below so you guys can take a look at Hotshot in uh, Cybertron and what he actually looked like. But here was his 
wings with the cyber key made them go really fast the issue i have with these is that they're not accurate these are supposed to technically be yellow or transparent plastic like the windshield essentially here but they're painted in this red color now at the same time i understand that maybe they didn't want it to be transparent plastic due to the fact that you know you want this to last a long time but they could have at least painted it like a golden yellow or something like that i don't know these are really cool but i do wish they were more accurate to you know what we saw in the show um but overall really solid for a faith full remake of hotshot in his vehicle mode and i i'm not i i know i listed a lot of personal issues but that's because this character holds a lot of you know a near and dear to my heart right this character is near and dear to my heart um i grew up with the toy and playing a lot with the original toy and uh, watching the show and so um although i pointed out a lot of issues it's still really good it has that perfect shape pretty much that the original car had there's just those details that definitely um, i'm pointing out are not uh, accurate to the original show but again a good faithful remake in the vehicle mode so we're going to do some comparisons so we're going to set a hot shot off to the side there Alrighty, folks, here he is with the Deluxe Class Legacy United and Fernac Universe Magnius. Obviously, I tried to use Magnius in most reviews as a good size comparison. As you can see, Hotshot is a pretty good size Deluxe. Um, Magnius and him are almost the same size, but Hotshot is a little bit longer by a tad. You can also see that they are pretty much around the same-ish in terms of width. So, very, very nice here. So, yeah, Hotshot, like I told you guys, is a very solid, well, like I mentioned, is a very solid size Deluxe. And I think that for what you're getting here i think it is really really nice when it comes to the scale so can't really complain about the scale here Alrighty, folks, and a really, really cool comparison. Here we have him with the Voyager class Velocitron Speedia 500 override and when it comes to override these two have a very big history together she was essentially the ruler she was like the queen essentially of velocitron because she was the fastest car on the uh, transformer on the planet um in addition to that um hotshot beat her to uh, achieve the cyber planet key which was the trophy uh that they needed to obviously you know they need the full cyber key so that they could get the omega lock it's a whole thing you if you guys watch the show you guys know what i'm talking about but these two really scale solidly together now the issue here is this is that overrides a voyager Hotshot's a deluxe, and unfortunately in the show, Override and Hotshot were about exactly the same size. They were obviously different vehicles, but the same size. Here you can see obviously Override is a bit bigger because she is a Voyager. Now I do think that that was I do think it was a bit of a mistake to make Override a Voyager instead of a deluxe. Um, especially if they were planning to make this, I don't know how far they were in their plans to make Hotshot. Uh, but it would have been nice, and it's it's not like the scale is egregiously off. Um, I just think it is a little bit off. Hotshot should be a tad bit larger to match uh, uh excuse me to match override or override should be a little bit smaller to match hot shot so either way uh either this is guy's undersized she's oversized but again voyager versus deluxe you know the classes that's that's where i think they might have made a mistake but at the same time these two still scale together very nicely i'm not saying that it's a bad scale it's really solid and it's nearly perfect it's just that size class difference between them definitely makes a difference and you can see that Alrighty, another comparison we're going to do here that I had to move them back a little bit is with the Voyager class Cybertron Universe Legacy United Starscream. As you can see, obviously Voyager versus Deluxe, uh, but these two scale relatively well together. Also in the robot modes, they scale relatively well together. Starscream in this form, his robot mode... I. I I don't remember him being compared too much to a lot of the other Transformers. It's been a minute since I've watched the show, but I do remember, you know, I watched it a lot, but it's still been a while since I've watched it in full again. But at the end of the day, um, this is still pretty solid scale, and I'm really, really happy with how these two look together. You know, it's like I'm turning back time in the mid to mid early 2000s and watching this show again because for those of you who don't know real quick little tidbit uh when i used to wake up for school every morning um this was the show that was on um a lot this is the show i distinctly remember being on that i would turn to but unfortunately i woke up too late yeah, obviously you're a kid you want sleep um and i would always turn on the show just as the show was ending so very unfortunate but at the end of the day these two scale together very nicely and i can't complain all too much and for the future review coming on Monday, because obviously so this is going to be released on Thursday, um, but 
Here he is with the Transformers Legacy United Voyager Class Cybertron Universe Vector Prime. And for those of you who have G-Axis, you guys will know how big this guy actually is because uh, at the end of the day, Vector Prime is a G-Axis remold and retool um, and repaint as well. So you guys can see um, these two scale... Ah, and that keeps falling off for me. Um, but these two scale together very nicely. Now, Vector Prime actually should be... In his vehicle mode should be much larger than this, um, but at the same time, when it comes to robot scaling, that's where I think these two are much better. But overall, really solid stuff, so you guys can just see the actual difference there. Obviously, a Voyager versus a Deluxe, there's going to be a pretty big scale difference between these two. We'll set this guy like this, so you guys can see the actual size difference. But yeah, um, like I said, this guy's review will come out uh, on Monday, sorry, on Tuesday, Um so yeah, again, these two I think scale together just fine. It's just, again, if you really want complete accuracy, Vector Prime should be a good deal bigger than this. But for the robot mode scaling, I think this is perfectly fine. And finally, guys, here is a crazy, crazy comparison. Here is with the original Deluxe Class Hotshot from Transformers Cybertron, because I still have the toy. I still have the spring-loaded missile, which still works, by the way still works um i just don't have the cyber key on me because unfortunately it's buried under a bunch of spare like transformers accessories that it's it's buried deep and i don't want to i don't want to look for it it's just really hard to get to but taking a look you can see the difference here if you look it's very so subtle but the original hot shot is slightly darker in color which i argue is a little more accurate and this is what i was talking about so the the thing that kind of bothers me is that this part here is the with the yellow and the blue is painted uh, correctly this isn't here also the back of the car is very much more accurate because if you look at the original show and the video i linked in the description this is how his mufflers were these were essentially his mufflers right here at his feet also i'll have to get something let's see if i can i don't know if this will actually spring load activate it maybe it will it'd be funny if it did uh yeah it actually did that's funny um, when you activate these, you can definitely see these are painted in the accurate transparent plastic. Now, keep in mind, this is a really old toy. Um, now, these are, this is a bit more sturdy, in my opinion, because they made toys like bricks, bricks back then. Um, but you can see that these are the more accurate colors. So, really, really, you know, stark contrast, but you can see... It's, this guy is pretty much as accurate as possible while still giving it a modern twist in a way. Uh, but yeah, you can see why I was kind of having a hard time. Now you can see the Autobot logo uh, was rubbed off here and there's no Autobot logo. There's just because I played with it a ton. And then when you look at the bottoms, this is where um, they're very similar. Um, very, very similar here. I will say, you'll we'll see it in robot mode, but these details are different. But yeah, when we're talking about, again, accuracy, yes, the original toy at the end of the day is, in my opinion technically more screen accurate but as a modern redo this is a really really good figure and at the end of the day um you can also see the size difference between these are two deluxes you know 20 years plus around apart um there's a stark contrast between these two when it comes to their sizing um you can see that the original one is much bigger uh but overall still a really good effort uh from hasbro with this new hot shot i just at the end of the day man i still can't help but say that the original was still a bit more accurate now to clarify my stance a little bit on what i'm trying to say is that i know that this is a modern you know reinterpretation so not it's not going to be 100 percent accurate i totally you know i understand that um but it's still you know, it's crazy that the original toy is still more accurate because if you watch the show, the way that I would learn how to transform them if I didn't have the instructions on me was just through watching the show because they showed you those transformation sequences and everything like that. Um, and so it was very easy to understand how to transform them because they showed you right in the show, right? And that's how they made the toys. Um, and so the toys were always going to be mega accurate. And I understand that. Um, but I, I'm just trying to say that, you know, even though that this isn't a bad attempt at all, this is fantastic, this figure is really, really good, um, the original still is more accurate in a good chunk of ways, so just want to point that out, but with that out of the way, my stance sort of a little bit more clarified, I hope you guys understand what I'm saying, let's get into the transformation, and although it is very similar to the original transformation, um, they did a couple small twists here and there to make it a little more complex, because at the end of the day, the original transformation was extremely simple like really really simple so you can leave the uh, cyber key and i'm going to remove the uh, gun and we'll set that off to the side here what i like to do come here 
You can split the arms off the or what the doors will be. Take this entire section, uh, accordion it up essentially like this, and then you can start to rotate it around like this. Then come down here to the bottom. What you can do is split the legs and then unfold, uh, open these panels and then accordion the legs out like so, and then just fold that back in. And then what you're gonna do is unfold this part. You're gonna rotate the toe out and then you're gonna fold it back in or the foot. Do the same here. So I'm gonna do this, fold out that panel, accordion the leg down. You're gonna fold that in. You're gonna fold this part of the car you're going to fold the foot out and then back down. Then here at the top, we're going to move the camera here. Here at the top, you just want to split this. And what you're going to want to do is there's the head is right in there. So you're just going to want to take your fingernail, pull that out. And then what you'll notice is that at the back here, there's like these two tabs uh, or like two friction tabs. Essentially, if you look back here, there are those there are tabs like right below his neck. I don't know how easy that is to see right there. And then you're going to fold this panel down and then you're going to sort of put those pegs accordion him, uh, accordion these friction pegs along the ones in the bottom of his neck. And then, yeah, um, just setting this guy up a little bit. Going to turn his head. Going to bend his arms correctly. Fold. You can fold the uh, the windshield down on his butt. But, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, here is the Transformers Legacy United Cybertron Universe Deluxe Class Hotshot in his really awesome-looking robot mode. Overall, guys, this is where, in my opinion, the figure shines a bit more than in his vehicle mode. Because like I told you, I know I pointed out a lot of inaccuracies with the vehicle mode, but that's also to be expected because it is a modern reinterpretation of the of the figure and the character just with you know again with modern twists but giving us still the essence of what made that character that character in terms of its looks and everything like that even in the transformation and so when you look at this guy in his robot mode it's pretty much spot on i mean what they did very much more accurately that you'll notice is i think that they did these paint jobs here on his shins more accurately um i also like the fact that they went with more of a gold rather than a flat bright yellow um i think that adds a little bit to it there is one inaccurate there's a couple inaccuracies though the autobot logo i believe is should be bigger and is accurate on the original toy in addition to that in his forearms he should have three missiles here so essentially you'll notice in the original toy we'll obviously do the comparison he has three missiles here and he actually uses them and shoots them in the show now they weren't uh be able to be used as missiles in the actual toy but the fact that they molded them in because he used them in the show was uh, definitely there so that is a little bit unfortunate but overall really really solid looking so taking a look at that head sculpt you can guys can see that is a gorgeous head sculpt extremely accurate to the cartoon very very cool coming down here to the chest area very very accurate as well the nice red here in the center this gunmetal gray on the side the darker even darker darker gray here for the chest the more gold yellow coming down through here so nice molded detail here on in the crotch here on the legs and the thighs and then coming down here you can see the nice molded detail in the paint here on the legs and coming around on the back there's nothing. I mean, yeah, you do have this backpack, but it's not huge or obtrusive or anything like that. Just limits his actual articulation a bit when it comes to the, like the lower half of his body and even the upper half of his body. Taking a look at the arms too, very very nice. You can see that this is accurate. The doors were his hands uh, on his uh, on his forearms, everything like that. So overall, extremely extremely cool. And obviously, you just have the peg for the gun here. You can just peg it right in like so, and no harm will be done to you. Now, one thing I'd also like to point out is if you would like to remove the doors. You actually can so you just twist them off and then you do have a uh, five millimeter ports there and that's how they're on is there with just five millimeter ports but you can see with the door there should be three missiles here like one two three but there isn't um so that's a bit unfortunate but yeah all you have to do is just peg those back in and that is very very cool now this robot mode besides some of the tiny details here is not without its faults it's very very solid but at the same time i will explain those faults when we get to the articulation because that's mainly where they lie but like i said the only thing here is the autobot logo is a bit tiny um i do think it is probably more appropriately sized here um in addition to that i do think that when you're looking at the show model, even though I am happy that they used uh, the 
the gold, more of a golden yellow rather than just a flat, bright yellow. The flat, bright yellow is still a little more accurate, but I get they wanted to go for more of a little more realistic as if you think about it. If you saw that yellow on actual Hotshot, if he was real, it would probably be more of a metallic because he's, he's, he's metal, right? It's made of metal. And again, just those missiles in the forearms, but that's not an awful deal. I'm just pointing it out because I noticed that with this toy, right? I, I noticed all, I noticed these little details here. So... I'm going to put the gun uh, back in his hand here, and then we are going to be doing our regular comparison. So, <clears throat> sending Hot Shot off to the side here. Alrighty, folks, here he is with the Deluxe Class Magnus, like I mentioned before. Obviously, you can, like I told you, Hot Shot's a pretty substantial size Deluxe. And this is really nice to see that, obviously, we're seeing the variations. And not saying that. Magnus in any way is an awful figure. He's a great figure, but it's really nice to see Hotshot be a substantial size, especially for a deluxe figure. So very, very nice to see there. Here he is with his partner in crime, Override. And this is where I think that Hotshot should just be a tad taller. Um, they are pretty much eye to eye almost. They're nearly eye to eye. Override is a bit taller, but again, Voyager versus Deluxe, what are you going to do? Um, but still really, really solid scale. They're not egregiously off scale at all. No, like by maybe a quarter or half an inch maybe like a quarter of an inch if hotshot was a quarter of an inch taller this would have been perfect but overall still really solid just not exactly how i would have wanted it because these two should be eye to eye and i'll just point this out they are clearly not eye to eye if you're looking at the heads no they are not eye to eye but still really really solid overall Alrighty, here he is with Screamer. As you can see, this is where obviously there's a bigger size difference. Uh, Star Scream is a much bigger, much more, much more substantial Voyager in terms of size compared to Override. Uh, but this is how they should scale. Um, Star Scream might should might be a bit bigger in the actual show, but overall, this is how they should scale relative to one another. Star Scream should be a bigger character in comparison to Hotshot. You know, a plane, a jet versus a car. So really, really solid stuff here. Again, I'm not exactly 100% sure how big Star Scream was in comparison to Hotshot when it comes to the actual animation, but for the most part, this works for me. All right, guys, here we have Hotshot finally with Vector Prime, and as you can see, with Vector Prime, these two scale together very nicely. Now, I do not have the Siege Galaxy Upgrade Prime on me right now to be able to compare, but he would be a fair bit chunkier and a little bit bigger than I think he should be when compared, because Vector Prime and Optimus Prime's base mode, without his super mode, just, just the regular Optimus Prime, were eye-to-eye -eye with one another, right? They were the exact same size. So I would like to see Hasbro revisit the Cybertron Prime, um, very similar to how they approached the Armada one by giving it a Commander class. I think that would be a very cool Commander class Optimus Prime to have, um, would be a redo of the Galaxy Upgrade Siege version, uh, where you don't have that inner Ultra Magnus Prime, which clearly isn't the Cybertron Prime. They just had to carry that over from uh, the Ultra Magnus mold. But overall, when it comes to these two, these, these two scale together very nicely. Um, I think Vector Prime could be a fair bit taller, um, but again, they would have to probably increase the size class and everything everything like that and at the end of the day i am still very happy with how these two are scaled and i think it's pretty solid Alrighty, folks and finally here he is with the original deluxe class hotshot as you can see there are proportional differences specifically in the chest in the shoulders i think that the new one is much more proportioned better in terms of its robot mode in vehicle mode i think that the the old original one was is still a better vehicle mode, but when it comes to robot mode, I think that when it comes to the proportions and everything, I think this new hotshot feels better to handle, looks better, um, although that the Autobot logo in terms of its size on the original is also accurate, and I think that the yellow is a little bit better in this case on the original because uh, it is technically more accurate to what we saw in the animation model. But overall, this new one, I think, blows it out of the water proportions. I think the paint is still better quality. Um, I will say that the old one still feels hefty and like a brick, but at the end of the day, I still do prefer this new one in its robot mode despite the stuff I've pointed out about it. I think it's just proportioned better. The shoulders don't look like bricks right they they look much more streamlined and that they go along with the car so overall really really solid and i'm very very happy with uh, this new one in comparison to the old one
Alrighty, folks, finally for their articulation, and this is where this figure also has some issues. Um, I will say when it comes to the issues, they're not egregious, but they're certainly there. So we'll remove this for now so that we can get him in full motion. So the shoulders can do a full 360, but they run into this, so you'll have to sort of twist this. Um, well, you can't really twist it, actually, if you have it pegged in, but you can unpeg it and twist it to get the full range of motion. I mean, you can kind of get it, but it does unpeg uh, the back from those pegs below his neck. I um, mean, you do have, like, it's, like, weird. You have a joint there, and so you can go, like, out there. Um, you can't really go in, but you can go out here with the shoulder, but not by much, which is a bit of a shame. Um, you can go in a little bit, but you do have more uh, 90 degrees at the elbow. Then you do have an upper bicep rotation. It's just a really weird shoulder because of how they're designed i think that this is more of a fault of maybe how the shoulders were designed for the actual character rather than the actual figure um i think that they might have done the best that they could especially given this and how this is tapered off i think they probably did the best they could when it comes to the shoulder uh engineering but head full 360 it's on the ball joint so you can look up a good bit because or up a good bit because of how the transformation works as well as because of uh the ball joint and then you can look down like about that much no, nothing really crazy there um the waist you do have full waist but what, you, what you'll have to do is you'll have to fold up this part on that hinge and then you'll have to do the full twist here but you do get a full 360 and it's a bit tight in there that joint's actually pretty solid on the uh, on the waist there uh, you can kick forward you can kick back but it's inhibited by this so you're gonna have to fold that up um you do have 90 degrees at the knee you have an upper thigh rotation as well no ab crunch or anything like that but you do get some wild ankle rocker pivot now that toy guy kind of pointed this out and it kind of also oh my god well that that's not necessarily the best look ah all right, there we go. Sorry about that. Um, I guess I might have pulled that off when I was uh, messing around with it. But that toy guy pointed out in his review that one thing with his copy is a little bit of a QC thing is that his toes like to push up and definitely mine does on this foot as well and even a little bit on the other foot as well but that also makes him a bit hard to stand sometimes because his feet aren't necessarily flat so it's not really that hard to just tip him over. See? Um, and it, yeah, you can see I'm right now just trying to stand him up and he was already falling, but you can see what I'm talking about is that this figure sometimes, especially when I was like messing around with him, had a decent bit of a hard time standing because of the QC in his feet, but the articulation overall is still really solid and you can get some pretty sick poses out of this guy. Uh, the last thing I'll show here before is we'll, you can flip these up. It's very easy to flip these up like so. And then you can get that look. Now, it didn't really, he never used it in his robot mode, but the fact is you can do that. Um, and that's one other thing I didn't, I, I wanted to say when I compared him to the original Hot Shot that I didn't point out was that essentially what I like about this one is that this back part is way less egregious looking. Um, as you can see, I'll bring in the old one again. You can see that this part is huge and it shouldn't be that massive. Um, and in the show, maybe it was, but it really didn't look all that bad in the animation. This much more con clear, concise, uh, much more streamlined. I think it looks much, much better. Alrighty, folks, and time to get into the reverse transformation, which is just as simple as getting him to his robot mode from his vehicle mode. So we'll remove the gun. We will fold these bits away. We'll straighten them all out. Um, and then we'll come here to the top. We will unpeg the back section here, fold that up. Then you can just fold the head back in. Then you can just fold this section on the inside here. So you just take what that where those pegs were, and then you can just rotate it in like so and it's out of the way rotate this all the way around make sure you lift this up to get some clearance fold the front of the car and tab those together then all you got to do here is untab uh, these panels rotate an accordion in fold this in do the same thing here like this rotate that accordion that in fold down the panel take the feet fold those in after folding that panel out again fold the panel out fold the foot in then all you gotta do is smash these together then you can sort of take this section accordion it down like this then you can push this down like that and then all you gotta do is fold in the doors and put the tabs in so you've got those two tabs you have two holes in that side there and then all you gotta do is just push that in then we're gonna take that the gun plug that in and this is actually one case where i don't find the weapon storage looking absolutely egregious because in the show they actually did this so alrighty, folks there we have the transformers legacy united deluxe class cybertron universe hotshot back 
in his very cool vehicle mode. Alrighty folks, so for my final and concluding thoughts on the Transformers Legacy United Deluxe Class Cybertron Universe Hotshot, this is a really solid figure. Now, I apologize for a lot of discussion and nitpicking, it's just that this character holds a lot of, you know, special place in my heart, because I played with the toy so much as a kid, because it was easy to transform, he was one of the fan favorite characters for me, um, you know, he was, uh, he had a lot of screen time, on the screen time on the show, and I watched the show a lot after, you know, I, you guys may be wondering, well, you said you weren't able to watch the show in the morning, well, I bought DVDs and stuff like that, so I was able to watch it that way. Um, I have, I still have the full DVD box set of Cybertron, actually, uh, I might show that off sometime but when it comes to this figure this is pretty solid now it's not perfect i think that the vehicle mode actually in comparison to the original is less accurate and at the end of the day it is a modern reinterpretation so you can expect some minor you know details and changes and although i pointed out a, a good amount of the details and stuff that were inaccurate and stuff like that that doesn't make it bad by any stretch of the imagination it's just again it's coming from a place of love um i I want this figure to be really, really good, but I'm still going to point out the inaccuracies that this figure has. Um, now, the transformation, very nice. What they did is that they essentially kept a majority of the original transformation while giving a small couple twists and turns to uh, modernize it and not make it just, you know, fold arms, uh, extend legs, fold feet out, twist thing, they're done. Right? They added the head flip. They added... Um, that little peg in the back you don't have to just they're not like you don't stretch out the legs and pull them in so that they're you know you, you actually have to accordion them very very nice and then they have gap fillers too right because you have to fold out the panel accordion the legs out then you fold the panel back in and so it fills up those gaps looks really really solid and then when it comes to the robot mode that's where this figure shines a bit more um i think that the proportions are just a bit better there they feel a bit better to handle the shoulders aren't nearly as egregiously big the the backpack also isn't nearly as egregiously large when you're looking at it from like the top of his head and his neck upwards uh you know how it appears and gives him an aesthetic from behind um i also like what they did with the gun they didn't give it that spring-loaded missile so it makes it very nice to handle the cyber planet key is always a welcome addition the other issue i just have is that the in inaccuracy of the wings that's one thing that does i think i genuinely really kind of bothers me i wish they were painted in more of a yellow but i get that they were also trying to make it a bit accurate in some ways but yeah at the end of the day this is still a really solid figure and a figure i wholeheartedly would recommend you guys go pick up because the last thing i'll say about the this figure is its size it feels really hefty for a deluxe figure and that's really nice to see and despite it still being smaller than override or him being smaller than override by just a tad bit the scale is still really really nice all around and so out of a 10 i'm probably going to give this between a seven and a half to an eight um i think it's still a really solid figure without its issue uh, that doesn't uh, sorry that still has its issues but not insane um i guess the one thing i didn't mention the articulation is a decent bit limited specifically in the shoulders and that qc in the feet really does hurt uh, but still seven and a half to eight i think is a fair rating for this figure because there really isn't an insane amount wrong with this thing at all i don't really think that there isn't anything egregious uh egregiously awful about this figure unlike the you know some that we've gotten in the past so i did pick mine up on the big bad toy store so i'll leave a link in the description to that i'll also leave links to amazon as well as Hasbro Pulse, so you guys can find other retailers where you guys can go and pick this guy up. Um, and this guy should be hitting your retailers relatively soonish, I expect. So if you guys are looking for this guy IRL, I definitely wish you the best of luck in finding him because it's hard to find that nowadays. And funnily enough, I did find Vector Prime IRL, and I was able to actually <laughs> actually need to cancel my pre-order now that I'm thinking about it. So I will go ahead and do that after I, I finish recording here. But that is about it for this review. So I thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video please like comment rate and subscribe and share this video with your friends also follow me in the socials those will be linked in the description below and with that guys i once again thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video review and i will catch you on the next one hope you guys have a wonderful day peace